Welcome back. <laughs> well, that's the funky music for today. Uh, we had a question that came up uh, from one of the uh, subscribers, and it was on uh, whether or not uh, the Catholic lawyers is being used. Um, here, let's just go right here. I'll get right back in the screen here. Now, the question was, are, is the Watchtower using the same lawyer as the Catholic Church? And the answer is yes. I use that in a lot. Of, I talk about that a lot. I covered that a while ago. So if you type in Matt Haverstick right here, Matt Haverstick, and up comes everything on the guy. You know, there's what he, there's, this is what he looks like. You know, he's uh, pretty famous. Famous lawyer. These lawyers are worth a lot of money. Um, you, you scroll down far enough, Denver Post says, Attorney Matt Haverstick confirmed that his law firm is representing Jehovah's Witnesses. That's how easy it is to show a Jehovah's Witness. Just Google it. They can find this themselves. Now, it's right here from the Denver Post. Uh, this was uh, Haw. Uh, you know, you remember that? He, um, he's a former Jehovah's Witness elder, a father of sexual abuse victims, Martin Haw. So on this article, let's see if I can get rid of that. On this article, all the way down here, and I'll pin these in uh, the description here for you. Huh. Went all the way down and missed it. Did that last time. It's just one line, not, not much. Right here. Attorney Matt Haverstick confirmed recently that his law firm is representing Jehovah's Witnesses congregations around Pennsylvania on unspecified matters that are very active right now. Uh, this was posted in 20, uh, 2023. This was a repost. But this was posted in 2023. And this all started in 2018, a lot of this stuff right here. So if we go back to 2018, we can find uh, this. This is 2018. This is Matt Haverstick talking to uh, on the morning edition. It's This is a four-minute listen. Let's, let's listen in on it. I'm going to turn that on for you. So here we go. Pennsylvania grand jury released a report. It detailed the results of an investigation into the sexual abuse of children by Roman Catholic priests in six of the state's dioceses. The report found that more than 300 priests had abused children, and there were credible accusations by more than a thousand victims. Matt Haverstick is counsel for two of the dioceses included in the report, Harrisburg and Greensburg, and he joins us on the phone from suburban Philadelphia. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Haverstick. Good morning. Nice to talk to you. This report was appalling. We read about children being raped, molested, passed around by predator priests. You represent the people who led the diocese. Uh, how do they explain what happened? Well, I think they start by apologizing for what happened, and, 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 and they have. I mean, bear in mind, uh, it, it, it is awful. It's a horrible read. It's, uh, it's shocking. Uh, but it is, uh, by and large, as the grand jury found, uh, literally from the last century. That's, uh, that's a church that doesn't exist anymore. The church today is, is deeply sorry for those, uh, those events, but uh, they, don't, they don't do things that way anymore. It is a church from the last century, but... Okay, so <clears throat> how do you think uh, JW Org is going to fare? Uh, well, they've already probably sat down with Haverstick. And Haverstick is telling them, you're going to have to apologize. You know, this is what the Catholic Church did. They apologized. They've done payouts. They actually had to sell two Catholic dioceses in the state of Pennsylvania. And I don't know if it's in this article or another. But uh, they had to sell off property to pay for CSA cases. And he's saying that the church is deeply sorry and the ch church has made a whole pile of changes. So let's, let's compare that to what Jehovah's Witnesses are doing. Now, I'm just back at my main screen here. I'm going to play the um, clip from the annual meeting. So this is brand new stuff. This is up to date. This is how Jehovah's Witnesses feel 
or or this is how their governing body is running the organization this year this is how they announced it and when it comes to apologies here's here's the clip and also the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible and so it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction well, knowing this, then we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. We understand this is how Jehovah operates. He reveals matters gradually when it is needed. So what Watchtower has, is, is doing is they're sitting down with their legal team, Matt Haverstick, and they're saying it's God's fault. I want you to go to the Supreme Court and tell the court that this is how Jehovah operates. Like, there's no reason for us to apologize for all of these thousands and thousands. In fact, we're worse than the Catholic Church, according to a German report. <laughs> there's thousands of cases. Look at Australia, the small country, small amount of witnesses down there, and there was over a thousand cases. That was way back. That was the ark. You'd want to talk about missing the ark. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses used to preach at us Get on the ark, get on the ark. Well, they missed the ark. That was in Australia. They didn't get on. They're not on. They're not on the ark. You see, all of these religions got on the ark, and they, they started apologizing. Jehovah's Witness is the only religion that has not apologized. And in fact, in New Zealand, that is a big issue. And it's, uh, we, we covered that in other videos. But let's, let's run this a uh, little bit more and see what Matt Haverstick has to say. Now, you're going to notice... When he's talking, he's talking about, that was back in 2018, and I'm going to run this play right through because we're only a minute into it, and we're going to play it right through, and you're going to see the technique that these lawyers are using. They're fighting it on the basis of time limitations. They're fighting this on the basis of clergy penitent privilege, clergy privilege. So uh, Catholic Church is kind of you know winning a bit, so Jehovah's Witness ha ha wanted to get the good lawyer. Now, the other problem Jehovah's Witnesses have, their lawyer, Brumley, in the Montana case, he got charged $153,000, a sanction, for lying and deceiving the court. So his name is muddied. He's not to be trusted. He's a liar of a lawyer. Charged. <laughs> this is what's happening, folks. So now they, they have to hire worldly lawyers that are credible because they want to change the laws. Jehovah's Witnesses want to change the laws in the world. And they want to make it work their way. And in their very latest, uh, very latest broadcast, their very latest, David Splain gets up and, and, and he, he says to their religions, your time is near, your time is coming, something like that. And he was calling them out and calling Jehovah to come and strike them. That's, he, he, he figures he has that power to call down Jehovah to strike these governments. So let's listen to Matt Haverstick a little bit more here, and we'll see what he has to say. Many of them are still alive, and there's no way for them to get recourse because the statute of limitations has run out. Can you explain what the statute of limitations is and, and why it should apply here? Well, in, in, for any uh, civil claim or, or criminal claims, uh, there are time limits, well, for most anyway, there are time limits that allow you to bring uh, a civil lawsuit for money or, if you're the government, to charge someone with a crime. And there are victims and survivors who have claims that date back from the 50s and 60s, and their ability to sue for money uh, ran out some time ago. Does that seem right to you? Well, it, I don't think of it in terms of right or wrong. I think in the terms of what our, our, our state constitution allows for. Uh, I, I, the, the, the issues that we're talking about are really ones that uh, I think are best left to lawmakers. Let's uh, talk that, about that, uh, lawmakers because other states have changed laws. Many states have extended or abolished statutes of limitations for criminal prosecution of child sexual abuse felonies. Why doesn't Pennsylvania do that? Well, I, I, Pennsylvania can't. Uh, well, in terms of both criminal and civil statutes of limitations, there are constitutional protections uh, and constitutional limitations that don't allow for 
retroactive reopening of statutes of limitation. So I think of it less in terms of something that would, you know, can or can't be done, or rather uh, something that's desirable, not desirable, or something more that legally is just impossible. Uh, I'm citing a news report in the New York Times here from August 15th. Okay, so <clears throat> he's. this is back in 2018, we're 2024. And so um, the attorney in Pennsylvania, Henry, is uh, going after them hard. We haven't seen anything happening, but I believe they're changing the laws. They're changing the laws all over the world. Japan's changing the laws. Uh, Norway, their laws were changed, saying that this is child abuse. You see it's from child welfare. So different laws are doing it differently in different countries, different places, but this is being fought right now in Pennsylvania. Let's, let's hear a little bit more. What, how he's how his defense is going to go. A Catholic conference, the Times reports, whose president is Bishop, Bishop Ronald Gaynor of Harrisburg, argues that a proposal to, to change a statute of limitations would force the people who make up an organization like the Catholic Church to defend themselves against crimes that were committed years ago. I want to ask you, is the church actively lobbying against a law that would expand the statute of limitations and allow victims to get justice? Well, in fact, the uh, church is, is, is in support of the bill uh, presently uh, that's been passed in our Senate, Senate Bill 261, that increases the statute of limitations both on civil claims and makes the criminal statute of limitations uh, perpetual. Uh, church has been for that legislation, and that legislation is poised to pass the House of Representatives, and if it does, uh, going forward, victims will have an unlimited ability to have a Criminal actions brought, and uh, present-day victims will have a statute of limitations that's vastly increased from the one that uh, exists now. The church is in support of that. Very briefly, if that law passes, what does that mean for for your clients, for the diocese you represent? Well, it means that if there is an abuse claim from today, that the uh, victim or survivor of that claim has uh, until age fifty to bring a claim, and as long as as long as Present-day claims like that, claims that happen uh, today, are, are and the statute of limitations expanded uh, across the board for all institutions, not just the church, but for schools and, and for other, uh, other institutions, then the church is fine with that. Matt Haverstick, lawyer for the Diocese of Harrisburg and Greensburg. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that is interesting. That's from 2018. Matt Haverstick is saying that the church is for those law changes. So uh, that means if they're, they're going to extend the statute of limitations for these claims, that means there's going to be more payouts. Um, so there's, I don't know, how is JW Org dealing with that right now? I don't think they're dealing that well with it. I think they're trying to fight all of this tooth and nail. They're trying to fight it in Norway. They're trying to go to freedom of religion. Why are they investigating us? They're, they're fighting these old tactics. The rest of the world's moved on. All the other religions, they got onto the ark. How figurative that is. They got onto the ark. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses used to say to me when I was in the religion, well, there's only one ark, and if, if you don't get on the ark, you're not going to make it. So I would be very weary if you're a Jehovah's Witness out there because your religion, they did not get on the ark. They're not going to, going to apologize. No. They, you see, when you to get on the ark, you have to apologize. You have to own up to your mistakes and you have to be man about it and pay them out. Deal with it and then move on as a religion. And that's what all the other religions are doing. They got on the ark. Well, that's the end of the program. I hope I've helped you out there uh, and the rest of the audience in, in get to know who, who the uh, Jehovah's Witness lawyer is in Pennsylvania. Matt Haverstick, you got to, you got to hear four minutes of him. Talk about this stuff openly. Sounds like a nice guy. And uh, it'd be interesting to be a fly on the wall in the boardroom of him and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Be interesting. But it'll all come out, folks. We just keep uh, tuned in, keep subscribed. Helps push our channel. And it, we keep you informed with the news. This is coming out. And when it does, we'll let you know. So until next time, keep living your day with love. Bye for now.